It says, I signed a lease agreement with my tenant two months ago. Yesterday, I discovered that the tenant is an ex-convict, convicted of fraud. I don't want him in my property any longer. What can I do to get him out? Oof, unfortunately for this uh, viewer, if, if this information wasn't disclosed to you, um, and it was actually part of your application process, then we can then we can deal with that depending on the lease agreement that you're using so the tpn lease back lease which is always my go-to reference lease um, in terms of uh, where would that be, uh, clause uh, 24, um, does allow clause 22, does allow for a landlord to cancel a lease agreement with immediate effect, not cancel, terminate, basically voiding it, if the information that, that was used, uh, that was given to the landlord for the vetting process, if that was false or fraudulent or something was withheld, then you can cancel in terms of that lease agreement will terminate um, with immediate effect going to the consensus. So the basis of the reasons why the party is contracted is then um, uh, not real and not true or false or whatever. And if you had that information, you wouldn't have entered into the agreement. And for that reason, the contract is voidable. But in this case, it doesn't necessarily sound like that was part of the vetting process. And the truth is um, to do criminal checks as part of the vetting process is as standard as doing a criminal check. And all the TPN users would know exactly um, as part of your ID check and your bank verifications and all of those things, you do a criminal check and, and the way TPN does it now, is it's as simple as you send a link to the uh, prospective tenant. They take a selfie, like seriously, like selfie, and they do uh, ID verification, uh, criminal checks, and everything on the back of that, which is very important. And and I, it's one of those things that I don't just recommend. I think it's silly not to. It's almost like not calling the previous landlord, not doing a, a deed search on the previous landlord to see if this is actually the person. It's like not calling um, the, the employer to do an actual check whether they are employed and are earning the salary that they say they're earning. Um, it's part of the vetting process for the landlord. It's the landlord's obligation to do it. So if in your decision making, um, you've omitted to do the criminal check, now it came to your knowledge, unfortunately, the horse has bolted and that person is entitled. There's no grounds for you to cancel um, on the back of criminal activity and a conviction that he probably already served his sentence for um, mm -hmm. after the fact. If you have the opportunity and if you did full vetting and you realized, okay, this guy has a criminal record, I don't want him on my property, fair enough, you don't have to place him. But if he didn't disclose the information, you've asked for it and he lied, 100% grounds for immediate termination of that agreement because it goes to the basis of the consensus. However, if you didn't ask for it during the vetting process, um, unfortunately, uh, there's nothing you can do about it and you need to um, sit the entire lease agreement out. And next time, at least, it's a valuable lesson when it comes to tenant vetting. Uh, so, Silna, uh, maybe, uh, maybe for the viewer's sake, um, touch on... So even if um, even if information was asked for, but there's no no material implications. Let's say uh, uh, maybe speak to the materiality of the misrepresentation, how that impacts the the lease agreement. Uh, wh what do you mean, Bruno? So you can you can. So a criminal uh, check, for example. No, no. So a criminal check, for example, might be material. But remember, everyone has their own sense of materiality. Yes. So a person can easily ask for. Uh, whatever, like what religion are you, right? And yes. it's something that people can refuse to answer. But let's say that you ask the religion, the person says, I'm Catholic. And then later turns out that he's not Catholic, he's Protestant. And now you go, oh, you know what? I want to cancel the lease agreement because, so I mean, 
around yeah. that. So the materiality of it, uh, how does that actually yes. play into the lease? Okay, so I, I see what you're saying. And, and I think I'm going to go back to our earlier conversation earlier in the year about discrimination. So uh, your example, obviously, on religion was specifically right straight into that, where you can't refuse based on, on, on religion. Uh, that's discrimination. But there isn't any um, constitutional obligation to not, um, and I'm going to use discriminate, you can fairly discriminate against a person that does have a criminal record, for instance, in employment, in occupation, in a lot of things. You are allowed to say, no, if you have a criminal record, unfortunately, I don't want you to occupy my premises. I can't employ you, whatever the case might be. So I, I don't necessarily think I'll use the term material uh, per se, but uh, we're not allowed to discriminate unfairly. So now you need to go back to, to Section 9 of the Constitution. So race, gender, sexuality, pre pregnancy, um, religion, all those things not allowed to discriminate against but uh, when it comes to uh, behavioral things like credit record payment history data uh, criminal records those things you are allowed to ask for it and if you ask for it and they don't provide it to you um, then i wouldn't conclude the lease but if you ask for it and they provide you with the incorrect or false information that's give you grounds for immediate termination thank you so much Sona.